Good evening to you. I'm Zanilo Evangelista and welcome to our update on Tropical Storm Alyssa. Sorry I'm getting this video out to you pretty late, but uh, I'm getting it out to you. Uh, we have quite a bit to go over this evening, including uh, changing tracks um, and a track shift that is potentially putting Jamaica much more in the line of direct fire from Melissa. Uh, we might get a potential landfall, but even if not, uh, the impacts are certainly starting to look a lot worse for the island. I'm going to go over the latest with the track shifts uh, and the models um, all coming up. So please uh, stay tuned and let's get started uh, with the update. Obviously, starting off, as always, with the latest from the National Hurricane Center. Uh, the 11 p.m. advisory, I know, is probably just about half an hour to 45 minutes away, but... I'm going to stick with what we have with the 8 p.m. advisory. Maximum sustained winds at 45 miles per hour. Minimum central pressure of 1,003 millibars located at 16.0 north and 75.5 west if you're tracking it on a map. Um, and it is uh, moving north right now at 2 miles per hour. Uh, and just to let you know that the Hurricane Center was actually in there with recon uh, earlier this evening, and they did find that the center of Melissa has reformed a little bit to the north, and that is definitely also shaking things up when it comes to the track of the storm as well. Here's the latest satellite image of Melissa, and let me really quickly reload it to give you the full loop. Uh, and you could definitely tell it's starting to organize. As I mentioned before, the center reformed to the north, maybe um, inside uh, this huge burst of convection that we're now seeing on the satellite loop, uh, and it looks pretty persistent as well. Uh, maybe this is the beginning of uh, Melissa uh, aligning with its low and mid to upper level uh, portions of the storm. Uh, and once that happens, we are going to see this begin to rapidly intensify uh, quite a bit. And a northerly re reformation as well means that this will not only get closer uh, to Jamaica, uh, but this might even uh, shift even further from that, might even put uh, Haiti back in play in terms of potentially getting some quite impactful rainfall and even some gusty winds and uh, potentially tropical storm force winds from uh, Melissa here. But it certainly makes things a whole lot more worse for Jamaica. It also potentially means that uh, we might even see an earlier uh, northeasterly turn uh, from Melissa as well. Uh, and just to represent that with you, here is the model track guidance from the 6C run earlier today. Um, and you could see here a lot of the track guidance kind of had this going north and then taking that westerly dive just to the south of Jamaica. There were a few model uh, tracks here that took this directly over Jamaica. And then we have this red track here, and that is the AVNI, and that is the GFS track. Uh, and the GFS has always been the contrarian, uh, showing that this would immediately uh, move on off to the northeast. And obviously that is not going to happen. Um, but, you know, we had most of the tracks here just to the south and west of Jamaica. Compare that to the Zero Z run uh, for today or, you know, the Zero Z run that came out uh, that, you know, is listed as tomorrow. But obviously it's still October 23rd officially, at least as of Eastern time in the United States. Uh, but the zero Z run is out and you notice there's definitely been an eastward and a northward shift in the track and a lot more of these track uh, ensemble members are much much closer uh, directly in some cases uh, directly over the island of Jamaica and why is this happening uh, let me show you on water vapor because uh, this is also a, a yet another neat product to give you an idea of what is going on in terms of the troughs and the ridges we have in the atmosphere uh, and something that has kind of really helped uh, with the northerly track as well. I mean, besides of the fact that we had a, a northerly reformation with the center, uh, we've also kind of had this trough digging in, which you can see here on the water vapor by uh, the, these drier conditions in the Northern Caribbean. Um, and because of that, you also see the outflow, especially on the uh, you know last few frames here of this loop, really beginning to surge with Melissa 
uh, also potentially a sign that maybe this is finally, uh, you know, not finally because, you know, we would not like it to rapidly intensify, but maybe this is the beginning signs of rapid intensification as app flow begins to intensify, you know, a storm is able to breathe easier uh, and it allows it to grow and become strong over what are very, very warm waters of the Caribbean. But we have this trough that is digging in right now that's allowing for Melissa to move a little bit to the north. Uh, and that's also driving the uh, track right now, shifting a little bit further north and much closer to Jamaica. And you can see that as well reflected on the latest uh, National Hurricane Center track. Obviously, the entire island of Jamaica completely submerged in the forecast uncertainty with Melissa. It's really going to be a wait and see game to see exactly what happens. But at least the exact center of the track you see here um, is very, very close, if not, I guess, almost uh, uh, yeah, at least by the latest National Hurricane Center track. And this track, by the way, is from five o'clock um, is almost, you know, kind of clipping the far western portion of the island of Jamaica. Um, but I will say it, it does not matter because either way, even regardless of what happens, and even with this, um, you know, only clipping in terms of the direct center, and that's what I mean by the track, by the way, is the direct center of where Melissa is going to cross. But the rainfall is going to be very widespread. Uh, we're going to see heavy rainfall for the entire island, heavy rainfall as well for Haiti and as well heavy rainfall for Cuba, all going to be associated with Melissa and it's going to cause a lot of problems for a lot of people in the Caribbean. And I mean, there are hurricane watches in effect for Jamaica right now too, as well as tropical storm warnings. Uh, and that's for both Jamaica and the Southern portion of Haiti right now. And I'm pretty sure as the days goes on, we're probably gonna see a lot more of these warnings too go up in effect for portions of Cuba, uh, and eventually probably for the Bahamas too, once we get to that point, but that's still a few days out. But uh, the rainfall is going to be the biggest issue. And I'm pretty sure as the days goes on, because this is only a three-day forecast, once we get to day four and five, you're going to start seeing the island of Jamaica uh, submerged and probably all kinds of, you know, oranges and reds that we have here on the map. But for now, at least within the next three days, um, areas very much a lot of areas here, including Jamaica and even the southern portions of Haiti, um, upwards of a foot of rain, uh, if not higher, uh, and probably going to be even higher than that, um, especially, again, once you take in the fact that, you know, this only goes out to three days uh, and just wait till you see uh, how the forecast will be once it goes out to seven days, I wouldn't be surprised if the entire island of Jamaica as a whole gets over a foot of rain, uh, and it's probably going to be even higher than that. Uh, and, you know, rainfall, as I said before, is the number one killer when it comes to a tropical cyclone. It's very problematic, causes uh, flooding, mudslides, uh, takes a lot of lives, catches a lot of people off guard. Um, and obviously, you know, this is on top of the fact that this will be a major hurricane pretty much uh, as this approaches, uh, you know, the area uh, right around Jamaica. Um, but the track is still a little bit of uncertainty. And I'll show you that with the latest hurricane models. I'm only going to go over the hurricane models right now. Tomorrow, though, we will go over uh, the uh, global models as well. But I'm going to stick with the halves. Um, and I'm going to show you here over the next several days. Uh, the halves is interestingly enough. Uh, much further to the north, and in fact, uh, just to the east of Jamaica. Uh, so they kind of have this uh, intensifying quite a bit, bottoms out in the upper 920s, low 930s. So this is probably category four. Uh, so it's not like, you know, a Wilma type intensity category five just out the Jamaica as it was a few days ago. Uh, so the halves is really caught on to the northerly shift in the track uh, today. Uh, and actually, this would be a better scenario for Jamaica, where they probably get some tropical storm winds, um, mainly on the eastern side of the island, and then this ends up going north. And then obviously, this is going to be a huge problem for Cuba, and also impactful for the Bahamas. Um, but I will say this is a much worse scenario.
for Haiti, especially the southern tip of Haiti, where, you know, this will probably bring a lot of rainfall for them. And then obviously, you know, this then moves northward. Uh, and interestingly enough, the half speed as well, uh, also showing the scenario. Uh, and they kind of have this as well at around day five, crossing the northwestern tip um, of Haiti. And that definitely uh, right here looks much more of a scenario where most of the rainfall instead of Jamaica is much more um, on top of Haiti. So the rainfall totals that we have here, uh, some of it, eight to 12, 12 to 16 inches of rain, probably going to be if, if you know, the half both models scenario happens, uh, probably going to see some areas here get 16 to 20, maybe even two feet of rain in some places of Haiti. And that will be certainly very disastrous for many reasons, especially given that, you know, Haiti is not a very rich island at all. Um, in fact, it's a very, very poor island. And, you know, that only whenever you have to deal with a very powerful and devastating storm like this, you know, it's not very, it's not easy at all. Um, and this will pass just to the north. Uh, but it's very interesting, um, especially, you know, I guess the halves, you know, really took into consideration the northerly shifts that we saw uh, with the track today using the recon from what we got earlier. Um, although I'm actually not sure that no, this is the 18Z run. So I don't think that the model actually took into consideration uh, the northerly the northerly shift that we saw in the track that recon got earlier. So we'll actually have to wait to the zero Z to see what the model shows taking into consideration the northerly shift uh and i'll probably report to that uh report on that tomorrow morning on twitter uh if i feel motivated to but definitely going to try to do so a lot more but you know things are very much getting interesting we are definitely seeing a shift in the track uh and at least if looking at the majority of the model ensemble guidance um it is making things very very interesting for jamaica and in fact you know what i'm actually going to show you the h wharf here really quickly just to top out and this is uh probably the worst case scenario or one of the worst case scenarios for jamaica uh we have you know uh melissa here really starts getting going tomorrow uh, and then rapidly intensifies as we head into the weekend bottoms out upper 920s low 930 so probably category four uh, and then pretty much uh skirts the southern half if not um basically making a landfall on the southern end of the island and then skirting the coast um, throughout before this then eventually makes a northward turn. Uh, and this is probably what ends up being the, the worst case scenario for Jamaica with not, you know, not only just that the fact that they're dealing with the landfall, but definitely uh, from the rainfall. Uh, and they're gonna be dealing with the rainfall from pretty much uh, starting Saturday especially Sunday and Monday is the worst. And then they deal with it all the way up until Tuesday. Uh, and then eventually uh, Tuesday, the H wharf shows a landfall in Cuba. And then eventually this moves on off to the Northeast and affects the Bahamas too. Uh, and, you know, this is also as well a shift in the track northward and much closer to Jamaica, um, as well as, you know, the half shifting northward and eastward uh, compared to previous runs, although H Wharf not as much. Um, so this is definitely making things very, very interesting. Uh, and again, this is making things very, very interesting for Jamaica. So if you are in the island of Jamaica, and even if you are in Haiti and Cuba as well, or you know people in those islands, tell them to start paying attention and getting all of their plans ready. Um, maybe, you know, see if you could try to fly out f friends or family members that you have in these islands um, for potential evacuation, although you only have a few more days to do so. Hurricane watches, once again, are already in effect for Jamaica and the southern portions of Haiti. Uh, and, you know, things are only going to continue to heat up uh, from here on out uh, as, Jam as Melissa continues to churn in the Caribbean. Uh, and will eventually, um, in just a matter of about a day or so, begin to start intensifying um, pretty, pretty quickly. Uh, and I will continue to update you on Melissa 
Uh, we're probably going to start doing multiple video updates a day very, very soon. Not sure about tomorrow, but certainly over the weekend, we're going to start doing multiple updates a day. Definitely a lot of updates on Twitter. So please make sure to follow and subscribe um, as things are going to start heating up here. Uh, and uh, like as well and share once again with family and friends and those that might be in the Caribbean uh, and tell them to watch Melissa very, very closely over the next several days. Uh, but that's going to do it for tonight's video. Once again, I wanted to get a video out for you tonight, even though, uh, you know, this is very late. So I hope you see this. If not, stay tuned for my video tomorrow and definitely all the videos I'll be doing you doing for you this weekend. Uh, thanks for watching. See you. See you later.